how do you hook up an electric cooling fan? In this video, it's not going to be about mounting the actual fans because there's many different ways you can do that. There are many different style brackets to mount the actual fan to the radiator. Some are slit through, some are brackets that grasp the actual frame of the radiator, and then some radiators just actually come with the fan already made onto them, although it's still all bracketing the mounts to the frame. But we're not going to get into that. The biggest issue is the instructions always usually come with how to mount the fan to the radiator, but then when it comes to the instructions on wiring the thing up to the relay and, and the wiring process, it's usually vague. They give you a relay, a fuse, and they think, well, you're ready to go, which is my, kind of the crucial step to getting the thing to work. So in this video, I'm just going to briefly go over how you actually wire up the uh, cooling fan with the thermostat switch and the battery power and such. It's not going to matter what type of fan you have. No matter what color, size, or shape, or whatever, it's going to work the exact same no matter what kind of fan you have. Okay, let's get started. First off, the relay. It seems like when you go to part stores, it, everybody's an idiot or retarded or something. I haven't figured out what the hell's wrong with them. But if you're telling them that you're wanting to hook up an electric cooling fan and you ask for relay, they want to give you a five pin relay. You don't want a five pin relay. That's not the one you use. Unless you plan on putting lights or something on your dash to tell you when it's off or on or something. The five pin serves no purpose. It's got an extra leg that does really nothing. It, it stays con connected when there's no power and then it disconnects when you add power or it gets switched by whatever's triggering it. So you want to go with a four pin relay. So we're going to stick with that uh, concept. I will create another video and I'll put that link down in the description on uh, how a relay works. Let's start by looking at the bottom of the relay. You'll notice you have four pins and there's four numbers. The majority of these relays are made with these numbers and they correlate with what they are. Uh, normally 85 and 86 are going to be what energizes the little coil inside and then your 87 and 30 are the, the legs that connect whatever you're going to connect like the cooling fan or what, what for. If it was a five pin relay it would have a a horizontal line running in the middle of this relay would be 87A. However, we won't be using 87A if you're using a 5-pin relay. Like I said, if that's all you have, this was been given to you in a kit, or if that's all the parts store has and you have this 87A, you will not be using it. Now let's just stick to the 4-pin relay. And your relay may look like this. It may be where you can just bolt it to the firewall. It has a little tab up there. Then you have your four wires that come out. And you can like again you've got the 85, 86, 87, and 30. The 85 and 86 are what switches the little electric uh, coil inside the relay, and that pulls the switch basically, basically just contact points to connect 87 and 30. It does not matter if 85 and 86 have reverse polarity. Every time you look at a relay diagram, it shows 86 is the one that always goes to ground and 85 is the one that always has the power. I've hooked them up either way, it doesn't really matter. This is DC, so it, it, if it was AC, which is alternating current, there might be a chance that it wouldn't work, although you wouldn't have AC on a vehicle. DC is one direction. If it was a diode, it probably wouldn't light, because the diode has to have uh, the correct polarity in order for it to light. A coil that's, that becomes a magnet, you can take a nail and wrap it with wire and hook it either direction and it stays it becomes a magnet that's how it works and that's what this is doing it's just a coil of wire that becomes a magnet and pulls a contact down to cross between 87 and 30. now let's take a look at this diagram as i mentioned 85 and 86 is what actually engages the magnet to, to cross is 87 30. so let's figure out how we're going to engage the relay obviously you're hooking up a, a coolant fan on your radiator Normally, the, the way you're going to do it, you're going to do it with a coolant temperature switch. And, of course, they range, they range in dip, different temperatures, like anywhere from, you know, 160 to 210, I think. But, more than likely, your sensor is going to screw into the block somewhere, into the intake manifold, which means it's grounded. It'll have one leg sticking up, which what happens is when that gets to a certain temperature, that leg that's sticking up in the center of the switch ground so it'd be basically the same as you taking a wire and sticking it to the engine somewhere to ground it out 
Now, as I mentioned, it doesn't matter about the polarity, so you don't have to worry about 80, if 85 or if 86, which one's which. Let's just stick by the numbers. 86 is the one that's going to have power to it, and 85 is what's going to be switchable to ground. You can see that I have written in switchable 12 volt low current power. This means you just need a low current wire, anything like from, you know, a 16, 18 gauge wire is plenty uh, thick enough. You want it from switchable power, meaning whenever the ignition switch is turned on in the running position, that leg has power. You don't want it to where it has power in the accessory mode, just only when the switch is on. And that way the fan will only run when the car is running. So now when 85 and 86 are engaged, and it has contacts 8730 pulled down, then your cooling fan will run. Now according to this diagram, it shows that uh, 30 is what's getting the power source, basically your 12 volts from your battery. 87 is what goes out to the cooling fan. And you'll see here that I have 12 volt out to the, cool, out to the cooling fan is fused. You'll find a lot of instructions and diagrams showing that 30 in other words, where it's getting the battery source is what should be fused. I do not agree with this. This is kind of a case of 601, half a dozen of another. Usually whenever you're doing a wiring diagram, you're wiring, you're, you're trying to figure out where to put a fuse. You usually put the fuse between your device and the power source, and that protects the power source or protects the device, however you want to look at it. So since the relay is another device and it has contact points in it, it would be better to put your fuse in between the device or the accessory like the cooling fan and the relay that way it helps protect the contacts either way the relay could get overheated so the and burn up the contacts but I found it better to put the fuse between the two I've seen that as a matter of fact even factory wiring uh, diagrams are set up for the relay box if you ever open up a power junction box the relay is still working but the device isn't because the fuse blown they put the fuse in between the two which this then comes down to an important decision you got to make as far as getting your uh, your components correct. You need to make sure your relay is a higher amperage than your fuse. And what you got to do is you got to figure out how many amps that your uh, fan draws. And a lot of these fans, especially the foreign ones, or so where they come from China or whatever, they're measured in watts. So you're going to have to calculate watts to amps. And I'll put the link to the formula or the formula down in the description. If you're running dual fans, and they're measured in watts. And it, let's say, I forgot, I forgot what it was on mine, but it calculated about like seven amps per fan. So I figured in 14 amps. So I figured, you know, 20 amp fuse would be plenty enough. Cause when it first hits that surge of running both fans, that sometimes is the highest amperage draw it's, it's gonna pull. So 20 amps. So let's say you're using 20 amp fuse in between you, uh, your relay and the fans you want to make sure your relay is definitely a 30 amp, if not a 40 amp. Uh, that way it'll handle the load. Now there's another situation. You may have a temperature sensor that came with your fan or however the case may have come about, you may have a sensor that has two prongs. Now when it's two prongs, it means it's not using the body for a ground, which means you're gonna pass 12 volt positive through this, which is to switch inside. So when it gets to the temperature, it closes the contacts. If this is the case, don't worry, it still wires up pretty much the same as what I've been showing you, except instead of using, in this case, 85 as the switch, again, it's not going to matter which one switch, if the 85 has got positive opponent and 86 ground or vice versa, it's still going to engage, but let's just go by these numbers I've got here. Let's say 85 is switchable. You're going to make it 12 volt switchable, and 86, you're just going to run straight to ground. For 85, it's going to go to that that sensor, then the two prong. One prong will go kind of the same as before, but the one prong is gonna to go to 12 volt switchable power. In other words, whenever you turn the ignition switch to on and running, not accessory, just only on and running, it'll have power to that one prong on that sensor. The other wire is gonna go straight to 85 on the relay, meaning it's open until it, uh, well one, you have to have power on, and two, when the temperature sensor gets to the dedicated temperature um, then it'll close the contacts and then, then it'll engage the relay making 8730 contact which makes the fan run so if you're if you run into a situation where you have a two-prong sensor this is this is the only change you would make so this is the basic wiring diagram of how to hook up a cooling fan um, 
This is using the regular temperature sensor. It's just got one leg. That's the most common one you'll find out there, even on uh, factory cars. For the ignition switch, you've got to remember that is power for when, when it's in the run position, not uh, an accessory. I mean, you can have it any way you want to. And for that matter, it can be a switchable power. You can have a switch on the dash where you, and I've seen some people do it, especially with racing cars or cars they know get hot. They'll just have a, a, a switch up on the dash and they flip it and it engages the fans. That's up to you. That's your choice. But you know, that that's when I've got down your ignition switch, that means when it's in the on position. And then, um, like I said, I prefer to put the fuse between the, the device or the fan in this case and the relay to protect the contacts on the relay. And ground is ground. So that's how you basically wire up a cooling fan for a car. Now, if you're actually wanting to if you've got dual fans and you're wanting one fan to only kick on when the air conditioner does, and that's not uncommon, pretty much, and if, let's say if you're building a street rod or car that's never had air conditioning on it, so you've, you've put an aftermarket air conditioning or added one from whatever, but let's say you don't have the wiring harness and you're going to wire up that second fan to run what the air conditioner does, it's going to be the same process except for instead of the ignition switch from the on position, it's going to be the wire that goes to the air compressor so whenever it engages so you'll have to tag off of it which would be the low current wire it would run in place of the ignition wire and everything else would be pretty much the same and well you wouldn't have a temperature sensor in it you would actually take the temperature sensor out and run it straight to ground the ignition switch would be in place of being legged off of the uh, power wire for the air, comp air conditioning compressor another way of doing it would be the same setup but instead of being a temperature sensor, you would have a pressure switch, and that may require going back to the part where you have a two-prong uh, temperature sensor back there where you run positive through it instead of grounding it. And if you have questions on that and you need help if you want to hook it up with air conditioning, uh, be sure to leave me a comment or send me a message to my website and show me pictures or whatever you want to because I, I do take pictures up there. So I hope this video helped you, and if it did, be sure to like and subscribe, and always check back because I'm always working on something crazy or something interesting and something I want to share. See you in the next one.